LinkedIn believes B2B marketing can be B2 brilliant, B2 bold, and B2 breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose built to make B2B mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer journey while building your brand. A platform with the trusted data and lead generation you need to beat KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always being seen by those who matter. So get ready to be to boldly go where no marketers have gone before. Because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything it can be. Rethink your B2B marketing LinkedIn ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. On this episode of Winfluence. We're always looking long term. We're not a one and done program. Um, so we're really thoughtful about who we choose and then we kind of collaborate them for several years. So and some of that is paid and some's not. It just really depends on the time commitment and what we're asking for. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. You regular listeners are probably wondering what's up with an episode drop on a Thursday. Well, we've gotten into a nice weekly rhythm here on Winfluence, but today I have a treat for you. We're going to do a drop in on an episode from the Business Storytelling Podcast hosted by my friend Christoph Trapp. He's a smart content marketing guy who, as his show's title might imply, focuses on storytelling for brands and businesses. I was going through his old episodes recently on a road trip, just kind of listening to the old archives, and found a really good one I thought you should hear. So I reached out and we agreed to each air an episode of each other's shows to our respective audiences. His and my hope is that if you like his show you hear today, you'll jump over and subscribe so you don't miss a future episode of the Business Storytelling Podcast, too. It's certainly worth adding that one to your feed for sure. Now, the episode I wanted you to hear is actually a couple of years old. Normally, I wouldn't go back that far, but it's with Rachel Miller of SAP. She is a brand side innovator and thought leader in the influencer marketing space. Christoph and Rachel talk about influencer marketing overall, but then get into the ins and outs of B2B influencers, big brand influencer programs, and beyond. It is a useful listen, so we'll drop that in on today's show. Folks, if you haven't heard, well, you haven't been listening, but Tagger is one fine influencer marketing platform. They are our presenting sponsor, and man, does Tagger come in handy for me. I actually sat out to find creators in a very odd and specific niche last week, but instead of going straight to Tagger's discovery tab and searching for a keyword or topic, I went to its signals feature. This is where you can drop that keyword or set of keywords and see how much chatter about the brand or topic is out there on the web, then identify the influential voices talking about it. That gives you a head start on finding the more right influencers for your brand or project. Now, I could go on, but you know I use Tagger every day for the influence strategies I work on for my clients. You should at least check it out. Do a free demo at jason.online slash Tagger today. No commitment or anything. Just see how it works. Jason.online slash Tagger. When we come back, an episode of the Business Storytelling Podcast with Christoph Trapp as he interviews SAP's Rachel Miller. That's next. On Winfluence. LinkedIn believes B2B marketing can be B2 brilliant, B2 bold, and B2 breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose built to make B2B mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer journey while building your brand. A platform with the trusted data and lead generation you need to beat KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always being seen by those who matter. So get ready to be to boldly go where no marketers have gone before, because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything it can be. Rethink your B2B marketing LinkedIn ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. 
Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. Facebook is taking action to keep its platform safe. Their safety and security teams are over 40,000 strong, more than the size of the FBI. In the last six years, Facebook spent over $16 billion, enough to build seven pro stadiums, all to help create safer connections. More than 40 million people are using Facebook's privacy checkup each month. That's nearly 60 times the population of Washington, D.C., and they're doing all of this to keep their platform safe. Learn more about the work ahead at facebook.com forward slash action. And now for a special guest episode of the Business Storytelling Podcast with Christoph Trapp. Hello, business storytellers. It's Christoph Trapp, your host and author of Content Performance Culture. Today, I want to talk about influencer marketing, and I'm joined by Rachel Miller. She's the Global Influencer Marketing Lead at SAP. Rachel, thanks for joining us. No worries. Happy to be here. So I, I look back at, I don't know, 100 episodes or whatever, and we have I don't think we've talked about influencer marketing at all. So I'm excited that you were able to um, join us to give us an overview. Um, let's get started. What, uh, what's the definition of influencer marketing today, and, and why should people care about it? Uh, for me, I usually go with it is collaborating with industry experts and thought leaders uh, to create content that uh, informs your audience. Mm-hmm. S- simple enough. Yeah. <laughs> Period. <to read>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Okay. And and like, is that when you say collaborate? I mean, are those uh, paid engagements typically, or or uh, people just do it for other reasons, or what's usually the arrangement? In, in uh, it marketing? can be either or. Um, it really depends on um, what you're activating them for. Whether it's going to an event. Uh, co-creating a white paper or perhaps a webinar series. Um, there are so many content formats right now. We're really in an um, amazing place in time for marketing. Um, and sometimes they're paid. Uh, I usually um, we bring on influencers. We're always looking long term. We're not a one and done program. Um, so we're really thoughtful about who we choose. Um, and then we kind of collaborate them for several years. So, um, and some of that is paid and some's not. It just really depends on the time commitment and what we're asking for. Mm-hmm. And certainly there has to be some overlap, right? I mean, you can't just, uh, my, what, one of my funniest stories still is, um, I, somebody reached out and I did used to have a fitness blog. Uh, you know, I lost like 130 pounds, gained it all back, or not all, but some of it, all muscle, of course, haha. But... Uh, <laughs> But somebody reached out and they wanted to run a campaign with me uh, because of my fitness blog. And I, so I said, well, what is this for? And they said, oh, it's um, for men. I'm like, okay, like men that go to the gym? They're like, no, no, <laughs> all, all men. So when I dove deeper, right, they, um, it was like a, a male enhancement spray or pill or something. Uh-huh. So, so because I'm nice, I still sent them a proposal. But it was like, okay, I can do this for a quarter million. And they finally wrote back and they said, well, it, we don't think it's a, a fit. And I'm like, well, no kidding. It's not a fit. It's not, <laughs> you don't it's think not, it's a fit. <laughs> it's, it's not a fit at all. But for a quarter million, I'll do a you know a quick right. video for you. Um, so how do you find the right people and how like what kind of work goes into that? It's a lot of work. And quite frankly, it's still quite manual. Um, even though there are some really great tools out there, I'm a huge fan of Tracker, which is great for mm-hmm. influencer identification and also uh, managing the relationship throughout projects. Um, but there's still a lot of work to be done. So I frequently still find myself going to the platforms natively. So whether it's Twitter or Instagram, LinkedIn, and just kind of typing in the keywords and seeing who I find. And then it's just about doing a deeper dive. You click through all their profiles, um, read their latest content, watch how they engage. Um, Because a lot of times you fall into that trap where someone has a really great profile, um, but then you, you know, you look at their tweets and no one's engaging. Um, So then like, well, how much are they actually going to do for your brand? So there is, you have to put some time in, um, but uh, it's worth it for sure. So when you, I'm I'm looking through your LinkedIn and I can't get to the, uh, where I want to get here on uh, fast enough. But when you went to college, so Bachelor of Fine Arts, Drawing, Sculpture, Graphic Design, you didn't say, hey, I want to be an influencer marketing, or did you? 
No, that wasn't even like a, a twinkle in a marketer's eye back then, <laughs> um, which is so funny. You mentioned that because uh, at SAP, we've been uh, hiring for interns the last few weeks. And it's been so fascinating hearing what colleges are providing, um, not just work experiences, but just the courses you can take. It's really phenomenal. I wish I was back in school. <laughs> um, it's just really great because, yeah, no, my career um, – from college, I went into graphic design for a while and then content marketing, which then kind of bled over into uh, influencer marketing the last 10 years. But yeah, it's uh, didn't even, it wasn't even a consideration. Yeah. When I was in school. Wasn't a thing. And what, so are the colleges today, are they teaching influencer marketing? Is that what you were kind of hinting at? Yeah, there's, they're definitely, um, it's, it's, well, it's a big thing. So when you're looking there, um, several of them have had really hands-on experience with one, the identification piece, learning how to uh, script messages to outreach to people that they've never had to consider that like cold outreach, you have to be really sensitive uh, versus like a warm outreach. Um, yeah, it was really cool to see um, what they're learning. Okay. And so how, like, you know, people like you, people like me, we didn't have, influ- I mean, we didn't even have content marketing when I was right? in college. <laughs> um, you know, it was just marketing. Um, and how, so how, how do people in, in their career, like you and I, how do they learn these new things? Um, like, how did you learn to be an expert in, in influencer marketing? Well, I've had some really great mentors. Um, so, I think it was like 2012, I was working for Nimble, which is a social CRM, um, mm-hmm. which was created by John Farrar. And we shared yep. an office for a couple of years. And um, he is really big on relationship marketing or just relationships in general. Um, he, it's really integral to his business success. And I learned from watching and basically just mimicking the way he interacted with uh, clients and partners. Um, and I got some true hands-on experience working with him. Uh, which has been integral uh, for my career um, because every touch point, um, whether it's your colleague or uh, an influencer, um, is meaningful. So it's really the foundation of uh, my career. So, of course, John was on the show a couple months ago here and um, talked about, you know, how do you build relationships in the digital age? Um, So everybody feel free to go back and check that out. Talked about the four E's of um, digital relationships or digital business, I think he called it. Um, so you just have to learn, right? You just have to kind of go with the, the punches and, and learn new things as they pop up, I guess. Yeah. And I think um, being in marketing these days, you kind of have to be an avid learner because things are changing on the daily. <laughs> Whether mm-hmm. it's a change to a platform um, or there's a new cool tool that comes out. Um, so, yeah, I do a lot of reading. Um but you kind of have to, to um, stay ahead of the game. So um, you were talking about, you look at people's profiles, you know, like are people engaging with their things? And then certainly um, there's other tools you can measure. Um, what, kind of, what kind of tips do you have for people who are listening and who want to become an influencer? I don't know if anybody sets that as a goal, um, but, but what, um, y- you know, what, what tips do you have? Um. I would, I think the first thing which some people, there's a lot of, no, there's a lot of generalists out there, which there's, and there's Mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. But I think as someone who's trying to identify the best fit influencers for a project, when someone is really clear what they're an expert in or passionate about, that makes it a lot easier. So I would say, you know, choose your path, um, whatever it is, if it's fitness or food or, um, I don't know, shoes, (laughs) whatever your, your topic is going to be, and then just really start sharing content about it so whether um, and go with what you're comfortable with because um, that's when it, you really shine so if you have a passion for writing start creating blogs um, if you're a great public speaker uh, go the video route um, you don't need to be, do- be producing every type of content but definitely go with what is your strength um, and that way people can really see you um, at your best and you know I'll just uh, reiterate that um, to make sure people heard it. And I know some people are probably tired of me saying it on here, but at the end of the day, you can't do anything in content marketing if you don't publish content. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it sounds so simple. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, I'm not going to show up at your door. You have to be, have a footprint somewhere. <laughs> so, I, I'm, but it's so amazing, right? How many people say, Oh, we're, we're slowing down. We're being more deliberate. And I'm like, well, can you be more deliberate going at a, good speed of sharing content. Um, 
but interesting. So, like, how many influencers do you work with at any time? I mean, it's a full time job. Um, you know, how, what, what kind of campaigns are running? What's like, like, what does your day look like? Um, so SAP, um, well, I'm relatively new to the team. This I'm just starting my uh, second month. So um, it's a vast organization. Um, there's a lot of different teams, a lot of different lines of business. Um, so we have multiple programs running kind of simultaneously um, between events, definitely at events. Um, and it really varies. Some of like our larger, like SAP, like for Sapphire, one of our uh, clinical events of the year, um, we'll bring a, a large posse. So maybe 20, 30 influencers will attend. Um, and I'm headed to Mobile World Congress in a couple of weeks and that we're having a smaller program. We're only bringing three. So it really depends on um, each particular project and what our, our goals are. It, it, are a lot of your campaigns focused around events or is it a mix between events and certain percentage and other things? It's a mix. You really want to keep that steady drumbeat. Um, you don't just want to kind of blow up around an event because there's obviously a lot of um, there's a lot of buzz going on already because it is an event. So what's more important is this between, the in betweens. Um, so that's where the the evergreen content um, and creating things that can be shared all year round. So journalists at heart here, Rachel. I can ask the challenging questions, and you feel free to disagree. <laughs> Um, when I, you know, sometimes at events, and I, I'm, I'm not sure these are um, influencers for specific organizations or who they are, but it seems to me that a lot of times what I see is influencers, they just run around, not all of them, but some of them, and they're posting just selfies, right? Like, here's a selfie. Look at me, Christoph. I'm here, um, um, you know, in front of the stage, but I'm not sharing any value. Um, that, is, that can't be the right strategy, or is it? Not for me personally. Obviously, every influencer has their own kind of persona. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to be drawn to those who maybe they're sharing a selfie, but they add context to it. Like, where are mm -hmm. they? What are they doing? What's the takeaway? Just purely sharing a picture doesn't always carry much weight, but um, it really it, it depends. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that as well, to, to, that people share some kind of detail from what they're hearing, what they're seeing, maybe an opinion um, you know, adds context to whatever it is that people are talking about. Exactly. Uh, yep. Um, what else? What, what else do people need to think about when they work for, with influencers? Are there any? Um, are there any risks? I think there was a, a mattress factory a, a company, Casper, maybe. I think it was Casper, um, and in their um, FEC filing, they said. One risk is we work with influencers, FYI, or something like that. Did you hear that story? Yeah, I, I do remember seeing that cross my feed. Um, and, of course, there are risks. I mean, influencers are humans, um, and humans can do silly things. <laughs> but, again, um, it really comes down to the onus on the brand and doing the research. That's why there's a lot of legwork that goes into correctly selecting influencers, um, really doing a deep dive, um, and not just, like, high level where you, you look at their last couple, you know, pages on their Twitter, it's going back a year, looking at all their content. Um, Cause yeah, you never know. And I tend to shy away from anyone who has, you know, they're, if they're overtly political, um, cause that's obviously that's a hotbed topic right now. Um, or, you know, super religious. Um, so yeah, I just kind of make sure that they're, and, and it maps to the brand uh, basically. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And of course, you can't be responsible for everything anybody has ever said, you know, since right. Twitter was invented. Um, but I'm sure people, somebody at some point will find a tweet from 12 years ago and say, well, Christoph said this. I'm like, oh, that was a typo, maybe. But you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Exactly, yeah. And also, opinions change. So yeah, you can't really hold somebody up to something that they may have said a decade ago. Because um, yeah, you do, they can reserve the right to change their opinion. So when you review, I mean, do you literally just go through like the whole Twitter feed and check the last year or whatever, or is there like a like a like a software tool you use? How does that look? Like, how do you do that? Um, a lot of it is manual. Um, you mm -hmm. can use like a tool such as Tracker um, or a variety of other tools to go through, um, and also see like what if they're um, collaborating with any competitors. Um, you can set up uh, alerts like maybe to like Brand Twenty Four. You can put in some search terms and their handles and kind of see the general sentiment around them. Um, 
but yeah, a lot of it is unfortunately still manual. <laughs> so I, I want to circle back to the, the expert comment earlier or the generalist comment. Uh, last year, I went to the Marketing Artificial Intelligence Conference in Cleveland. Um, I also, I'm going this year again, uh, MyCon, or I don't know how you pronounce that, I guess. But one of the things that I've noticed at some of these conferences, it's, you know, somebody is an expert on whatever the current topic is. And now they're at the next conference, and now all of a sudden they're an expert at AI. And I'm... I mean, like I'm going to the AI conference because I actually want to, I want to learn more about that. I'm not an expert at that by any stretch of the imagination. So, but how do people, like, how do they, and then stuff changes, right? So at some point you probably have to evolve from being a content marketing person to who knows what's next. Um, how do people strike that fine balance in your opinion? Um. It is interesting. I do. Um, I work with several influencers, um, and I have over the years. They kind of their expertise has shifted, but so has technology um, and a lot of things. So it it can make sense for certain people um, as their passions and interests change. But it is. Um, I still think you pro- you you have your primary expertise. So whether it's you know for me influencer marketing, but then I'm you know I like to think that I'm quite skilled in content marketing. Um, and those, they complement each other. So you, it's kind of, I guess, if you're a marketer, but you have an interest in AI, like you, you can have more than one, but you, I do believe you still have your primary. Um, that is your, what you'll likely be known for. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, kind of what I do is that, you know, I'm talking about um, how do you tell better stories, right? And then sometimes podcasting is hot. So I talk about podcasting, but right. I'm not now the podcast expert, right? Sometimes I talk about video Etc. Um, how about finding people? Like, if somebody is a, they want to work with a company. I mean, do you want people to reach out to you, or do you rather just find them yourself? Process typically. Um, it goes both ways. I do have people approach me, um, and that's fine as long as it's uh, it may, again. It has to make sense. Um, mm-hmm. Because I've noticed, especially when I, I started at SAP, my LinkedIn was blowing up <laughs> with people like, oh, now we can collaborate. And I'm like, now we can collaborate. Um, <laughs> but again, I'm really thoughtful about who we bring on into our program. So it's, uh, but I'm more than open to someone contacting me. Um, and I definitely do a lot of research. Uh, I'm always out there looking for new faces. It's probably like the sales calls for everybody, right? Once you have 100 influencers pitching you at some point you can't really pay attention anymore unless somebody stands out yeah um but that that's again back to people who are wanting to um, position themselves as an influencer that's part of it like you definitely can reach out first to brands that you want to work with but just make sure you have your ducks in a row and and when they look at your profiles they're like oh yeah this person is interesting and we could work with them so you you mentioned briefly uh competitors and if so if an influencer already works with a competitor, like, what does that mean? They work with them, like they're sharing content from them or like, how do you know they're working with them? But they're not just, they didn't just share an article from the blog. Uh, well, hopefully they're, if they're, it's a paid engagement, they'll have to use the appropriate hashtags. So they're not flagged by the FTC. Um, but you can kind of tell, like if someone's at an event, like if it may, perhaps it's like a, a, a competitor software company and they're at their annual event, or you can kind of see, who's likely um, being a part of their program. Um, It's not always a red flag. Um, I am a huge advocate for collaborative industries. um, So sometimes it definitely makes sense. Um, It just has to make sense to their audience because it can look a little bit weird um, if someone's like, one day you're tweeting about SAP and the next you're tweeting about XYZ brand. It can look a little funny. So um, you have to be thoughtful about that as well. Yeah, I, it, it kind of depends on what you're sharing too, right? I mean, the, you tell me if this example, if you agree with it or not. But I was talking, so I I do sponsored content on my my blog, right? Um, and I but I usually try to tie it around a topic, and then you know they approve the topic, but it's still informational. And I kind of joke in my FTC note, right, that they supported the content, but no worries, it's still my opinion and my advice, right? Um, so. But let's say I'm talking to an SEO company over here and then another SEO company comes talking to me. Um, I mean, I can still do content for both 
if they're just sponsoring different content pieces, right? I mean, you can have one, you talk about, I don't know, long, long form, long tail keywords, and the other one you have something on voice search. I mean, that's, do you see any problem with that or not from a company perspective? No, because you're sharing your opinion. You're not saying, hey, go with this company. You're not, it's not a sales pitch. You're just talking about um, more the strategy and I guess the technology. So it really comes down to what you're saying. So if you're saying, well, go with this company today and then tomorrow you say go with this company, that's a, that's a Right. It's like when you <laughs> see like, an, you know, a celebrity where well, they're in a Coke commercial and then six months later, now they're doing Pepsi. <laughs> it's like, well, well, which one do you like? <laughs> They're, they're and interchangeable. Not, and don't drink soda at all. <laughs> <laughs> right. Drink whoever gives me money. Okay. That's an interesting. Um, uh, I'm, I'm glad you agreed with that. And I, you know, I was kind of thinking through that as we we're talking here because that's really another case to focus more on producing valuable content and then partnering with somebody who cares about that content as opposed to just saying, go with this company, go with that company. Exactly. And I think that's when you really are a true thought leader, when you can remain agnostic and you're just um, sharing your opinions on certain things. Very interesting. What else did we forget to talk about when it comes to influencer marketing? Um, it, any trends coming up? Any changes you foresee that, that people should be aware of? Um, I think the only trend that I'm super excited about with influencer marketing is just the selecting people who are best fit that aren't um, not the biggest followings, I guess, are more of the micro influencer. They're the true experts in their field, boots on the ground. Um, their audience is hyper engaged and they're more likely to move the needle for you um, just because of their um, more active audience. So I think that is a really good trend. Because I know when I first started, everyone was like going after the vanity metrics. I'm like, oh, so and so has 200,000 followers on Twitter. Um, but now the sweet spot, I think, is more in that like ten to fifty thousand range. Um, so that's uh, so that that for me is exciting. Which is still a lot of followers. Which is still <laughs> yeah. Which in the you know the in the spectrum of things, but still, um, I've just found personally that those types of influencers of that size can really do great things business wise. So um, this topic keeps coming up, right? How do you go after the right people? That's kind of why you're targeting micro-influencers, right? I mean, if you're going after 500,000 people, but they're all the wrong people, that doesn't do anybody any good, right? But if you're going after 50,000 and half of them are, or let's say 90% of the right people, um, you at least have a chance. Definitely. And this is purely just mathematics. Um, the larger your account grows, you're more likely to attract bots and mm -hmm. other things. So are people who just follow you because you're, you're like, oh, you must be important because you have a large following and then it just kind of keeps going. Um, and that really dilutes um, your engagement numbers. Um, so not that people should strive to have large accounts, but there is kind of a threshold to where um, the engagement metrics really fly. So how do you know, uh, can, uh, do you analyze people's following then before you, I mean, when you consider working with them? Definitely. Okay. Um, yeah. There are tools that you can use um, to just, yeah, analyze the following to let you know, like not just where they are, but um, the types of, even this, the spam, I forgot that I think it's spark Toro. Um, yeah. You can run through and it'll give you kind of like a, not a spam rating, but like, it's like a true influence kind of number. Um, mm -hmm. which is, it, it's all just, you know, things to consider when selecting somebody. But you also, on the, on the flip side, though, you have to be careful when you look at numbers, right? Because when people know what people are looking at, I mean, anything with numbers, you can find a way to game it somehow. Definitely. But I think engagement is a hard one. Like true oh, engagement is a mm -hmm. hard one to fake. Um, yep. So yeah, sure. Likes, they're great. But who's clicking through? <laughs> Um, who's actually taking action. Right. Yep. Very interesting. Rachel, what else did we forget to cover? Anything or did we, uh, did we share everything that was top of mind? Um, I think we did a pretty good snapshot. It's like a crash course in influencer marketing. That's how we like it. Um, snackable content, another buzzword for you. Uh, <laughs> I love uh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, you never know who loves what and who, who doesn't. Rachel, thanks for joining us and giving us an overview of influencer marketing. Good luck in the newest role. And thanks, everyone, for listening.
And that, my friends, was just one episode of the Business Storytelling Podcast with Christoph Trapp and his talk with SAP's Rachel Miller. If you like that, please jump over and subscribe. You can find the website at ChristophTrapp.com. That's Christoph, so think Christopher without the E-R, and Trapp, T-R-A-P-P-E. Or, of course, you can also search for the Business Storytelling Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to spread the good word about this podcast. Tell someone who might want to know more about influence marketing about Winfluence. Send them to winfluencepod.com or share a link to this episode on your social network of choice. If you have a moment, drop Winfluence a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. We're on all of them. You can also help make a future episode of Winfluence awesome. Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Send an email to jason at jasonfalls.com. If you're feeling adventurous, record a voice memo on your phone and email me that file. I'll let you ask the question right here on the show using the recording. Winfluence is a production of Falls and Partners. The technical production is by podcasting360.com. Winfluence airs along the Marketing Podcast Network. Thanks for listening, folks. and Let's talk again soon on Winfluence. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter, or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. And if you need help with your influence marketing strategy, drop me a line at jason at jasonfalls.com. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. podcast is part of the MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. Another great MPN podcast you'll enjoy is PR Talk, a show that digs into the modern side of public relations through interviews with thought leaders, authors, and the media on PR Talk with the Marketing Podcast Network. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.